Hi, and welcome to the Bookish Stitcher podcast. My name is Jeanette. You can find me on Ravelry, Instagram, and Goodreads as Bookish Stitcher, all one word. I hope you guys have had a wonderful little bit since I last recorded. Thank you to everyone who let me know that the last episode did not upload properly the first time. I think it cut off after seven seconds, so I think it's fixed now. But needless to say, because of that and because of life stuff, it went up a little late. So this one will probably be only a week from the last one, even though it was recorded like two weeks from the last one. So it's the way it goes. This week, like today I have my tea with me and I have it in this mug that I love. It has a whale on it. I actually got this from, I think it was, there's this museum in San Antonio and it had a whale exhibit at it. It's no longer there, but it had all these amazing whale things. And this is a drawing of a whale from, I believe the 1800s. And in my teacup, it's still a little too hot to drink. I have some David's tea from Serenity, or Serenity Now tea from David's tea. And then because it's been kind of misty and uh, humid outside and just kind of I don't even know how to describe it. I, my kids and I both have terrible allergies right now, so I've been trying this for a while and it seems to kind of work, but I have some like local honey um, that's like organic and pure and raw honey to have in my tea to kind of help my allergies. And if nothing, it at least like makes the tea taste nice and it helps with my throat and stuff. But I love this tea, the Serenity Now. I'm the only one in my family that likes it, but it has lavender and strawberries and hibiscus and I definitely need something soothing because earlier this morning I had to do something crazy that involved a lot of engineering because or just kind of finagling because my mom got my husband a used table saw for Christmas which was a while ago and she's been asking us to come out and get it come out and get it and it just wasn't really feasible because we had to come in a time with the bigger car and then we had to also have, not have the kids with us and that's just not, doesn't, it doesn't work. And so I had to go out this morning because my mom was like, you have two days to come and pick this up or her husband was going to, I guess, sell off her Christmas present to somebody else, her Christmas present to my husband. So I went out there and my mom helped me get in the car and we had to fold down the seats and the kids are at school so that was okay. But when I got home, I was the only one to take out this giant table saw and I had to like prop it up on things to get it to slide out and I had to like maneuver it and I built like a kind of step ladder out of things from items from my garage to get the ladder to go down uh, without clunking to the floor and scratching the back of my car. It felt kind of like high school physics class where you having to design a machine that does something and it was it was a challenge and I was definitely very stressed out and pinched some fingers during it so I'm having my serenity now tea so that I can have nice and calmness but let's get into the knitting this is still super hot so I have a fat half finished object and then I'll show you my fully finished object but this is the first sock for my daughter. This is Desert Vista Dye Works, and it is in the Zambadi RU, which I believe is one of her Alice in Wonderland colors, and it's super tall. It goes up past my daughter's knee, and then I knit them in a, si a woman's size five because you couldn't do toddler, or she's not a toddler, but you couldn't do child size socks. And so these are a little big on her, but it's okay. She'll eventually fit into them and she just pulls them up even more so that the heel is kind of in the back of her calf. But yeah, that there's only one of those done. And today it's like I have less than 48 hours left till the second one of these needs to be done. And as you will see in a minute, I'm like right here. I have so much left to knit and I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but I don't wanna give up and fail in February of the whole year because I feel like I always just, if I feel like I can't do it instead of like pushing on and like really trying hard and maybe like don't sleep and don't do anything and just get this done, I'll be like, well, I can't make it, so I'm just not gonna do it. And I don't wanna, you know, do that this time. I'm trying to harness the Olympic spirit, the Olympic spirit that I just watched. I don't know if you guys watch the Olympics, but 
I don't really watch sports, but that's about the only thing I do watch, and I absolutely love it. And the, one of the things I love about the Olympics is all the encouragement and them talking about like their parents and how much they encourage them. And I was thinking how much we need that in the world of somebody, friends, parents, siblings, mentors, anybody just encouraging someone. Because I can think of like, I could count like 20 times or more in my life where I've been really passionate or really wanted to do something. And somebody was like, oh, well, nobody really has a job with that. Or, oh, that's really hard to do. Or, oh, you know, you can't do that because of this and this. And I just gave up. And I was thinking of the times, like, if I had had people, like, really encouraging me what you can do. Like, those Olympians, they had people really encouraging them. And now, as an adult, like, being in my 30s, I know that, like, tons of people have really unique random jobs or, you know, people are Olympians and they, they're, that's their, like, passion and that's what they do. And then they may have, like, a side job where they do something just to earn money, but then they go out and they compete in the Olympics and not everybody wins a medal. But those people are still doing things they love and it's just awesome to see a community built around encouragement for the most part, right? It's not always 100%, but I just, I love that and I just definitely want to kind of foster that in my kids. Because I was talking to a knitting friend at a coffee house a little while ago and she was saying her, she dropped her daughter off for college. And I was like, oh, what is she going into? And what's she going to major in? And she said that she's going to be, I think, like a sea turtle conservationist. And I was like, and I was like, and you're cool with that? And she's like, oh yeah, we're, we're completely, we're great. We're so happy. We're so, we want her to, she loves that. She loves turtles, that's what she wants to do. And I'm like, I love that you are so encouraging of that for her because I had it, my first major in college or my first before I switched, I had a thing I was doing, I'm not even gonna say what it was, but I was very passionate about it. I had straight A's, I loved it. I loved going to class. And then as I was coming towards the end of my college career, you know, people were like, oh, well, you can't do anything with that, or oh, you need to go and get your master fed, or it was just like kind of a negative atmosphere around it. And so I freaked out and I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll go become a teacher. I'll go, I'll like transition at this period in my college life and go and get um, to transfer into teaching instead of what I wanted to do because I was like, oh, well, I can't, you know. I don't know why I thought that you could make a lot of money at teaching either, but I knew that you could get a job right out of college. It would be super easy. It wouldn't be a challenge. I wouldn't, you know, have to be working at like a restaurant while trying to find a job in the career that I loved. So yeah, I just, I love the encouragement around the Olympics, all that to say. And then my, I showed you guys last time the Ravel Linux project that I finished. And then I finished one more and I'm really happy with this one because this is a 2016 whip. And a lot of times with those, you know, you just will never go back to them until you frog them or something. But I only went back to it, I finished it. And when I went back to it originally, it was just a little tiny triangle and now it's done. And so this is by, I, it has been blocked, but the ends have not been cut. They've been sewn in, but not cut. This is a cowl by Hilary Smith Calais, and it is the Apia, I believe it's pronounced, but it's done out of some Western Sky Knits in their Bella colorway, and it's a Stellina. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it, but it has sparkles in it. And to kind of give a point of reference, I wore my Star Shower cowl, which is also a pattern by her, and also in <laughs> my cat's jumping in cabinets and is also in sparkly yarn so that you can kind of see how it lays. I didn't want to mess with trying this one on and also I thought, oh, I will wear my star shower cow so you guys can see. This one's been blocked, this one hasn't been blocked in forever so it's not as large as this one is, but yeah, it's blocked. It's gonna be a very nice size. It has the opening up here and you just put your head in through there and then it lays. And I made the biggest size that there was possible so I could use up all the yarn. And that was my Ravelinx finish. It's not like I didn't get a ton of projects done for the whip dancing, but I'm really proud that I got one of my really old whips done, one that I thought I might never get done. And so, yeah, it's done. And it's definitely motivated me to keep on going with knitting other older things I gotta decide which one I think I might still work on some of my Ravelinx ones that I had planned and see if I can get them done. And then next, in a Tangerine Designs bucket bag, 
I have my kryptonite shawl. I showed this one, I haven't gotten a lot of progress since you last saw it because I was just right there. And I, it was some easy Olympics knitting at first because as you can see, it's this part is just stripes, but then it got into a lace section and that, as you can see, is where I stalled out because I cannot, for me personally, knit lace and watch the Olympics. I just get too into it. I am, I don't watch normally like other sports, but I am that person that like jumps up and I'm like, yeah, go, go. And I am so excited about stuff like when Sean White won the gold and he was crying. I, I don't always love how cocky Sean White is, but so it felt like really good that it was his last Olympics and he won gold and he really seemed, I loved, that, you know, he really seemed to care about it. Like he, you know, he was crying and everything. So and I just wish, uh, you know, that he were humbler sometimes, but it's just a personality thing, right? So yeah, that will be worked on more. I just need to find like an audio book and sit down and knit the lace while knitting to the audiobook. It's not extremely complicated lace. It's just not good movie watching or Olympics watching lace. It needs more attention than that. And then in a Bing Quaffle bag, I have the socks that I'm going to like try to, f I'm going, I'm not, don't say the word try. I'm going to finish this sock. Uh, I, even if it means not sleeping. <laughs> so I have not much time left. I have to knit 10 stripes today and then six tomorrow or eight each day. I don't really wanna get farther and farther behind. I don't wanna like have to do, you know, 16 tomorrow if I just, oh yeah, we used to have one more day, but this is what it looks like wound up into a ball. And as I said earlier, this is the Zombody RU color from Desert Vista Dye Works. I'm doing their 12 months of sock thing. And I dropped a stitch. This sweet little fox is holding the dropped stitch. So I need to fix that as well. It was on the heel as I was doing the fish lips kiss heel that I do every time and it just fell off. And I noticed it luckily before it went crazy far down, but yeah, it's just another random thing that I'm gonna have to fix. So that is my sock and I've already got the March one wound up and it's great because I'm going to have a March colorway in March. I think it's called Zombody Go ba Bra or something like that, but I'll show it to you next time. And then I did cast on <laughs> one new thing as I was saying like, oh, I'm really into getting my old whips, but there is uh, the only retreat I'm probably going to be going to this year, not like festival, but like retreat. It's going to be happening soon and I had just got two skeins of yarn from that retreat. That's all I got uh, yarn wise, two skeins and I think I got a magazine. And so I really wanted to use up those two skeins before the retreat happened again so that I could be like, okay, I did it, I used those up. Not even if I intend on buying any yarn there, but I just wanted to have done that. So in a you so and so bag, I started another, it's like a, Hilary Smith Callis or Calais uh, pattern day because this is her uh, Adima, Adama? I can't remember the name right now, but this is out of some wool folk. And this is their worst is the cheaper uh, wool folk. But it's the, it's the FAR, F-A-R, and it's this wonderfully chain plied, so soft and it's in navy. I have this exact cowl. This is one of the rare times I'm knitting the same pattern twice. I have this exact cowl in a white cream color and I love it so much and I wear it a lot that I wanted another one in a darker navy to kind of vary up my outfits depending on what I'm wearing because if I'm wearing white or even gray, I will probably tend towards the blue versus the cream. And also this is just better if I'm out somewhere and I have makeup on because that white one would catch any makeup that I was wearing. But I just started it a little bit. And it's really, it's, you know, on a size nine needle, it goes very fast. So I have no, I will have no problem finishing that pretty soon as long as I actually work on it. <laughs> but so yeah, that, those are all my works in progress. And my husband was actually teasing me. He was like, so you say that you need to spin more on all the podcasts, so why don't you sit down and spin right now? And I was like, okay, 
I see what you're trying to do there and I'm not going to spin right now. <laughs> Being such a rebel, but I have been, you know, thinking about flying stuff and I almost did. I honestly almost did last Thursday. I almost just sat down and spun some. I got my wheel ready for it even, but didn't make the final plunge into it. I, it's another thing where a good audiobook, like if I tell myself, okay, you can only listen to this audiobook if you're going to be spinning. So that might help me. But yeah, those are all my stuff that I've been working on. I think for the for the Ravelry Group news, um, we have the 2018, 18 things in 2018. And um, so you can post in there, some people had asked, like your original 18 things, like whatever you wanna do, like knit 18 pairs of socks. And then every time you finish a sock, just go back and say, like do a new post I finished a sock, new post. I finished a second sock, new post. I finished and so on and so forth. Like you wanna knit 18 charity hats, whatever you wanna do. So that way you will have the most options of winning something as opposed to like editing your original post and there's not as many uh, draws to win something. So I will be, when I go to this retreat in a little while, I will be getting a prize for that because I said I would do quarterly draws. So I will be drawing a prize for that soonish maybe maybe next time or the time after that but sometime probably in the month of March I will be drawing a prize for that and speaking of prizes the adorn knits stitch markers that we had and then I'm gonna donate some yarn and stuff with that I drew for that and random number generator was awesome and picked an early number I picked number four playing with needles so when you see this playing with needles let me know and I will get those sent out your way I think that's all for the group news, could be wrong. I I was on Ravelry a lot for a little bit and then I wasn't and then it kind of just comes and goes. And so I need to, what I really need to do is update my stash and make sure that that's all in there. Because speaking of stash, something crazy happened. I was looking on my Etsy. So I had seen this on Instagram and I knew that I wanted it because it just spoke to me of quiet, calm moments of peace. And I love the idea of that. So, you know, as my, as we're getting into more and more activities for my kids and stuff happening and everything, those quiet moments of peace are few and far between. And I think I escape a lot into books recently where I can kind of go into a different world and, uh, which is not so easy with knitting. I bring my knitting with me and stuff to kind of keep me distracted, but I find even with movies and stuff, they aren't as distracting to my brain as reading a book. If they're not as engaging, I can't, I can just, you could just sit and watch a movie and zone out, right? Or television. And even audiobooks are bad for this sometimes, but with an actual physical book or even a Kindle, you have to turn the page. It's not going, or at least I, there might be fancy Kindles out there that turn pages for you, but if it's a physical book, you have to turn the page, you have to engage with it. So I found that I can't zone out to movies or I can't um, get immersed, take myself out of my own world and my own thoughts in my head with movies or even audiobooks as much as I can a physical book. And that's something I've really been uh, needing lately. So all that to say, I have no idea what I was just going with that. Anyways, so yarn, I was looking on my, I, oh, I, I saw this on Instagram. I was talking about how this yarn made me feel calm. Oh my gosh, you guys, I am a mess. But, so I knew I wanted this yarn. Moments of peace and calm, cheers. And so I went on my Etsy to go and see if they still had any there and like my own personal Etsy, not the, the yarn store that I haven't been able to update anything with for a while. Sorry to people who have asked, it's just in order to buy in bulk a big amount you have to, you know, have a lot of money. And we, I had used all my money that I'd saved up for when my husband totaled his car. And the place that I even get my uh, yarn to dye from is raising up their prices. So it'll be even longer before I can get more yarn in the yarn shop. So, and with school and stuff, it's just my money's and my kind of focus is going towards that stuff with school. But I was looking on my Etsy when I went on to go and purchase this and I had not bought anything on my Etsy in over two years. 
this summer or this fall, I think it'll be three years, like in July or September, whenever was that I last purchased. So it was crazy. I've not gotten anything on Etsy in forever, but I'm very happy to have some enabling that was purchased on Etsy. It's gonna crinkle. For those of you that love this, you're welcome. And for those of you that hate it, go menasai. I'm sorry. I've been obsessed with Japanese and stuff. And yeah, so this is some Tilting Planet. And it's called Tea Time with Sybil, which if you know anything about Sybil, the name, or for me personally, it uh, brings up recollections of the psychology case of multiple personalities that kind of garner in this whole realm of tons of people thinking they had multiple personality disorder, which was decades ago, but I wasn't even actually alive, I don't think, when the whole thing with Sybil happened, and it's probably spelled differently. But that's what it makes me think of, the name. So I'm just calling this Tea Time. And it's these beautiful creams and pale pinks and golden and, um, there's little flecks of red where the dye broke and some blues and some, yeah, it's just really some blacks. It's just a very hard to describe color, but it's beautiful and her labels are so cute. This is a super wash merino, 438 yards. And it came with, my daughter stole this promptly and I had to be like, where's my teacup? And she was like, you mean my teacup? And I was like, no, my teacup, it came with my yarn. And she was like, yeah, but I'm pretty sure that that's little and it's cute. And so it should be for little cute girls. <laughs> I was like, okay, you can borrow my teacup sometimes, but it came with this in a little like um plastic thing. So it's a little teacup on a saucer and it's a progress keeper and it matches the yarn so well, so I'm really excited to have that. And yeah, I haven't got yarn on Etsy forever, so it was very fun. And I think that's all the knitting and yarn stuff, so on to the book. I actually struggled with like, what am I going to review this time? Because a lot of my recent reads have not been great. I don't know if it's just like, I haven't, I've been like being a harsher judge or if I'm reading more so that it's taking like a better book to like bring me out of or like take me into the world of the book or something. So I had to go back a couple weeks, I think. I read this two or three weeks ago. I had to go back a couple weeks and find one that I finished that I really loved. And I almost thought of reviewing this one on the podcast last time, but I chose the other two. So this time there's only one book because I haven't been loving my recent ones. I'm reading a couple right now that I'm loving, but I'm not done with them. So I didn't want to review them just yet. And this is a YA, which I haven't reviewed in a while. And I got it as an owl crate. I'm kind of catching up on those, but it's called Eliza and Her Monsters. And it says, her story is a phenomenon. Her life is a disaster. And so this is about Eliza and she has kind of a dual life. She has her real, her in-person real life with her family and no friends. She goes to high school, but she has no friends at her high school, no in real life friends. In essence, like nobody that she sees every day or even anything like that, like she, is known to dress in way oversized baggy clothes and not really shower or bathe and that she sweats a lot. And I love how it went into all these details about her. <laughs> and um, she just she just kind of has created this bubble around herself of almost anti-personal hygiene stuff so that nobody talks to her because she has severe anxiety. She can't go to parties, she can't go out, like she goes to school, barely manages to get through the day, and she likes to, she doesn't have to talk to anybody, and then comes home to her dual personality of a web designer of a phenomenon taken off, uh, trend, super trendy web comic that was kind of an idea that came out of her head to where she felt like she wanted to, make a drawing to help with her anxiety and to kind of portray it in a certain manner. 
and she just kind of put it up randomly on her, like a little website for herself and some, I guess, forum found it. And like, then it became this overnight sensation and people have it like tattooed on them. Like it's a big thing, but she doesn't want to be known by it. So she created, when she created the web comic, she created an entirely separate person online. So she has two online. She has like her online personality of herself who has friends and stuff and people kind of know. And then she has this, the person who creates the comic and there's no name under them. You can't find people like news people have tried to like find out who this author really is of this web comic, but she's hidden herself so well um, that nobody can really find her. And only her family really kind of know that she even does it. And her, her parents are not tech people. They're, uh, I think they make like a, I don't remember if they like run an exercise club or if they just design exercise clothes. They're really into working out, which she is not. And um, so she, one day this boy shows up at her school and he is a super big fan of her webcomic and they kind of become friends, but he doesn't know that she designs it. And he, he also, he had experienced something really bad in his life to where he doesn't even speak in public. He writes down stuff. He doesn't speak out loud really whenever anybody is around. So there are some severe examples of anxiety in here, which I really appreciated the honest portrayal of those and reading them I could completely relate. And I feel like she, the author did a good job. But the boy is a uh, is also like really big in on the forums and he is he does not have a dual personality or anything, but he writes fan fiction. And so from some crazy stuff, which I will not tell you how it happens because that would give stuff away, the kind of her dual personality kind of, uh, they kind of collide and her anxiety just goes so bad that she almost can't function. And it, well, I guess she really can't function, but it's just a very good portrayal of anxiety. And she talks about how she doesn't really want to meet her fans. She doesn't want them to exist. She just wants to put out there this comic that she loves. And I mean, she's fine if other people get something out of it or enjoy it, but she doesn't want them to like come up to her and stuff like that. It just makes her anxiety go crazy. And um, I could kind of relate to that on the minusculest of things just cause like, I've been to knitting events where people, you know, recognize me, t like tiny little bits of people, because I'm not a big podcaster. But, you know, sometimes if somebody approaches you and they're chill and it's just like one on one, that's fine. She doesn't like that even in the book, but I'm okay with that. But like, if somebody like screams your name across a room or something, that uh, <laughs> that makes me want to throw up. So, it's you know, it's just kind of. A really good portrayal of how anxiety can kind of really limit your life and uh, I don't know I just really enjoyed this book and I felt a lot for the main character she she's really real and likable and you kind of you root for her even though she you know sweats all the time and <laughs> doesn't really take showers and can't really talk in sentences and stuff it's just she's like adorably unable to cope with the world around her and she just wants to be an artist and draw and be left alone. So yeah, if you, if any of those things sound good to you, then I would recommend you checking out this book. It's gotten super uh, great reviews on Goodreads. I think it has a pretty high rating. There are drawings in the book from the web comic. It's a fast read and so it's not one of those. It's a book that pretty much most people that have read it have really enjoyed it and I think that you would probably enjoy it too if it sounds something like you would like because it is well written. And so this is Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia. I don't know if I said that earlier but yeah that's all I have for this week and I think the next podcast will be kind of a fun format of like a knitting retreat vlog where I you know vlog some of it'll be a normal podcast and some of it'll be scenes from the knitting retreat and kind of do a vlog which will be fun and I, I personally enjoy vlogging because it kind of is easier to just do snippets and piece them all together and I can kind of feel like I'm being artistic versus like sitting 
in front of you and just talking and feeling nervous. But yeah, until I talk to you guys next time, I hope you have a wonderful couple of weeks and you get to do all the things you love. Okay, bye everyone.